what's mission prep? Tell me what, what that's all about. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> it's over. Edit this out. We're Edit done. This shit out. Kevin, do you love America? Of course. Do you love freedom? I like freedom. I like freedom pancakes. I like freedom. Do you like freedom t shirts? I do. Well, good, because we're selling Freedom T-shirts. <laughs> There's our shameless plug. No, uh, we have a limited edition for the 4th of July T-shirt on our shop if you guys want to go check them out. They're very patriotic, very beautiful. And yeah, they're going to just run through this month and then they'll be gone. So if you guys want to go get them while they're still there, we've actually already had quite a few people order them. So go check those out if you want to get one. <clears throat> Along with all of our other merch we have for sale yeah, we need to add some <clears throat> silkies to that we actually we are going to add more merch here in the future and there's going to be and male crop tops yeah well the, i've already said dude the crop tops are for everybody okay well i'm getting one with my ranger panties yes and i'm gonna be fucking sexy wherever i go kevin's gonna show off that midriff you know what i'm saying yeah i might um, even <laughs> just show up at the crossfit like what's up guys <laughs> in your crop top yeah You'll definitely look better than I do when I tried my wife's on the other day. Yeah. But, uh, and I'm not even joking. Um, but yeah, so we have, we have hats. Actually, I'm, if you're watching the video, I'm wearing one of the hats right now. Um, hats, shirts, coffee mugs, stickers. The stickers are pretty cool. They're pretty good size. I, I, I got my order the other day and everything was pretty good quality. So I was surprised. So if you go get a t shirt, help support the podcast. That's that's what we're going to use that <clears throat> money for is for making this podcast better for everybody involved. So go to, I always feel weird, like I feel like a salesman, but shop.spreadshirt.com slash mission prep. Or you can click the link that's in the podcast description. Or you can go to our website, missionpreppodcast.com. That will also lead you to the store. And go buy a shirt or a hat. Or something. All right. So, <laughs> uh, as you, if you're watching, also watching the YouTube, you can see we're oh, at yeah. a different setup today. Uh, we're this is a first try at this, but we, uh, yeah, this is our new uh, studio. I'll quotation marks around that. And if you don't watch, then don't fucking worry about but it. If you don't watch, uh, hopefully you get the same beautiful quality we've always provided. But we'll take a picture of it for Instagrams. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> need to. And th this is going to change as well. This is our first, like I said, it's our first go at it, but we're going to get something going here. Um. So yeah, so our guest today is Jack Asbury, also known as the Batman of Spring Hill. He... He's doing really cool things. Um, I, we were excited to talk to him. He reached out to us and asked, you know, if we'd be interested in having him on. And once I looked into what he was doing, there was no hesitation on our part to have him on the podcast. Uh, he travels around as Batman to hospitals to see sick children and to make them a little more comfortable, you know, and make do some make them feel good about themselves. And he's also gone to kids that are being bullied as Batman and gone to school with them. And he also has a nonprofit organization called masked miracles. So you guys, if the way he runs his company, which we talk about in the episode is it's all done by donations. So he needs you guys that are listening to this. If you can go donate, or even if you can just go share his stuff on social media, so more people are aware of what he's trying to do out there. He's doing good things. So his, uh, Social media handles are all the Batman of Spring Hill. That's on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, and then go go check him out. Go share his stuff. Go donate if you can, because he's he's doing really good things for children. And we talk about what he's doing in this podcast. So check him out. Anything else over there? No, man. Okay, then. Well, we hope you guys enjoy this episode. And... Right, actually, right now, you listening to this, 
if you haven't clicked the subscribe button yet, just click it. It's not that hard. Pick your phone up, press a button, leave us a review. That'd be cool. Whether you love us or hate us, one star, five star. I think that's only on Apple Podcasts. You can actually leave <laughs> yeah. a review. But leave a review. Say something about us. Tell us how much you fucking love the show. And also tell a friend about the show. All right, well, we love you guys. Love you, bye. Bye. Oh, I shouldn't say bye. I haven't ended it yet. I was about to. Oh. Love you. See you later. Love you. We're about to actually start the episode. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, so <laughs> here's here's more transparency for you guys. We record the intro after we do the episode. So that's why I'm saying bye. But really, it's like, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. There we go. Yeah, I just started recording video. I realized I was like, oh, shit, that wasn't recording. That's cool. Yeah. Audio has been recording. But yeah, uh, so yeah, with the beach right there, but you're extra humid being that close. Yeah, right next to the water. And then when it storms, we flood easy. So yeah, fun, Great. fun. And oh, you, yeah. got, you got all sorts of shit down there that can kill you. I know. We just opened up our uh, fucking ball python hunt in the Everglades. So that's really? fun. Yeah. 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 I'm not I'm not a fan of snakes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, who is? But well, there's some people out there, but <laughs> yeah, and alligators like I watched Dexter, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of I can't wait for the new season. Man, I actually had a dream a few nights ago that I was Dexter. I was me, but I was in the show. And I was Dexter and I was going around like just whacking people. <laughs> Knifing people. Dude, it oh, was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Did do you watch Dex? Did you watch Dexter? Oh, of oh, of course I watch Dex. I can't wait for the new season. Yeah, same here. It was funny at my job. Uh I have rubber gloves that I take on and off every I, I have multiple stops I go to, stuff like that. So every time I swap out the gloves and we have black gloves, and every time I put them on, I like in my head hear the Dexter song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I guess let's start with uh how did you get into doing what you do with the whole batman thing i'm so curious about that i've always been i've always been a geek and a nerd and everything it's just part of it my dad used to do uh our local like haunted house and he'd go all out and then we went to six flags once and they had like that batman area so i got to see it there and i thought you know it, it took a toll on me like it was just something that stuck with me so i've always loved it but um I don't know officially like what made me want to do it. I know the purpose why I wanted to, but as far as Batman, it's just, he's always been that one character. That's honestly the most relatable, you know, no superpowers, no, no nothing. So if I had a billion dollars, I technically could be him in realistic, you know? Um, so it was just one of those things I've always wanted to do. And just, uh, I, I liked having all kinds of movie props and stuff like that. So I had a suit made, and uh a family when I, I used to bounce at a bar um they were doing a bike run for their son um and they said uh you know if if uh i could stop by i'm like i guess i've never done it before so i stopped by and it's been just an everlasting impression on him. i mean this was you know three years ago and to this day he still talks about it and every time i see him he asks if i if i'm really him so <laughs> i just you know and then from there it just grew I, it just grew um and that's, pre that's pretty much it, how I wanted to do it. Um, and then the reason why I started the nonprofit um, was because of personal experience with my daughters and having that. Um, and, and, you know, at the same time, it just sucks. So I want to be able to help more people than just, you know, doing visits. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. What Because I've been checking out everything you're doing on online and stuff, see what you've done in the past and everything. And you can yeah. see how you've how you've evolved too. Mm -hmm. your, your suit's gotten a little better. The mask got a little bit better. You built your cave. You're sitting in now. You know you're yeah. you keep progressing, yeah. which is which is fucking awesome too. But I I have to ask you. You've probably been asked this about a thousand times. Who is your Batman? Man, see, I, I'm gonna get so much hate for this, especially like if you if you have people that listen that like it. Uh, I like Affleck. Yeah, because. Uh, I'm a big fan of Frank Miller's uh, The Dark Knight Rises comic, and that's like mirrors that perfectly. So I, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, well, that's it. You know, fuck Hilmer and fuck <laughs> Keaton and everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, I, yeah. I liked, <clears throat> I try, well, I don't know if I liked it, but when everybody was hating on Affleck going to be Batman, I'm like, you got to give the guy a chance. He might pull the shit off. 
Yeah. And I think yeah. he did it. I think he did a good of a job as you can getting that role and all the scrutiny anybody who gets that role is under. Yeah. You know Every yeah, everybody gets scrutiny. I mean, I talked to Michael Uslin and he's the executive producer of Batman, owns the rights to Batman. Um, he said Michael they petitioned to get Michael Keaton from getting that position. Yeah. You know, and then you have the whole uh everybody gave shit to Heath Ledger, and then you know, now everybody's doing it to Robert Pattinson. It's just it you'll never be able to please everybody. No, especially in that comic book world, you know, yeah. you get people that are so diehard and yeah, my my favorite probably is Michael Keaton. Either yeah. Christian Bale. So I get yeah, and then my question is the <clears throat> kind of reflection of a u- uh, utilitarianism like through uh, John Stuart Mill's interpretation from 19th century. Mm-hmm. So do you kill the Joker, right? Cuz if you yeah. kill if you kill Joker, then you save a lot of people, but that fight and that struggle you see Batman go through is gone, but mm-hmm. if you let him live for that to continue with that whole dynamic. A lot of innocent people die. Exactly. So like, yeah. So like, I guess, where do you sit on that? <laughs> you, you know, uh, I, I'd be the one to just take him out. That's, you know, that's how I am. You know, uh, a lot of people are like, you know, are mad at Affleck because he was using guns on his Batmobile. I'm like, well, you know, in like the forties, Batman had a, a sidearm. Yeah. You know, he had all these, so he, he used to kill people. And then he brutally beats people for like shoplifting and small drugs. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if it was me, I mean, I, I'd take him out. If it was real life, it's exact. He would get every weapon he could. Like, yeah. You can't hate yeah. on that. It kind of pissed me off on Christian Bale. What was it in the, the, in the second one that he did in the beginning where there's like other guys pretending to be a Batman and they have guns and he like <laughs> basically beats their asses for it. It's like, why are you? So, yeah. you're, you're so like, oh god, you're so, you're like so high and mighty. Like, you how dare you use guns? How dare you try to beat me? There's only one me. That was kind of like a very narcissistic thing to do, I think. Yeah, it was. I never, I didn't really like the the last two. I like the villains in the last two Batman's, but the suit made him look like too skinny and frail. I wasn't about it. I was, yeah. yeah that's I, my personal opinion. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a Batman fan. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, uh, the way I found out about you was my wife saw you somewhere online and she told me about you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And she's like, she's like, you should, you should try to get that guy on. And then not long after you messaged me saying you wanted mm-hmm. to come on and I'm like, Oh fuck. Yeah. So then I did, <laughs> then I did, did like a deeper dive into it. Cause yeah, it's, we've had a few people like reach out that want to come on and sometimes like i'll start to look into them like oh dude they're a wacko or they're right <laughs> they're a little too get crazy. That a lot <laughs> well and it's it's not even the the batman thing because that's like fucking awesome that you what you're doing it's like you get someone who's either like one side or the other too politically crazy or yeah i got like you that. It's like, oh fuck i don't want because we'll <laughs> sit we'll sit down to do this like through zoom or we've had people come in person that we had mm. never met before and it's always this thing like god i hope they're i hope they're cool because <laughs> if they're not this is going to be awkward you don't know yeah especially yeah. now man yeah man and we've been we've been really lucky we've had some some really good people on here but that's why like now when it's somebody i don't really know i'll just do it deep as a dive as i can online right try and find things of them on other podcasts whatever it is and that's it's worked out so far one of these days we're going to get some crazy bastard on here but yeah it's it's bound to happen yeah, yeah yeah for sure i'm down for it yeah, Kevin. Kevin's always saying exactly. he wants something crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all right. Let's just let's just get Alex Jones on now. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Fuck. Uh, yeah. From what from what I've heard though, everything he says, he's not uh, like a hundred percent wrong though. Is that I, right? I think from what I've heard is, it'll be like some of the crazy shit he says ends up being true, but it's also mixed yeah. in with even crazier shit that's not true. So it just gets coded. Yeah, and so it makes people because he is like a he's a showman the guy knows what he's yeah doing, i think i think he knows what he's doing with all his crazy antics and all that shit but i don't follow along with him but i know he's crazy and he's entertaining <laughs> that's it yeah same same but yeah so anyways uh yeah i do i want to talk more about what you do with with the kids and everything so when you first started that were you just like how did you go about finding the kids that that needed your service you know to show up as batman so that's the hard part man is you know i don't know a ton of people 
you know, that have sick kids or going through stuff. So I rely on others through social media. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I go. Um, you know, like, uh, I have, if someone sees something nine times out of 10, they're going to tag my Batman page. Uh, like the one I'm sure you saw where I went and saw Bridger. Bridger's the kid that stepped in front of the dog and got a huge bite to the face. Yeah. Uh, but he lived in Colorado. I'm in Florida. But with the community and the following I had, I had a business offer to pay for my flight to send me out there. So I coordinated with them, you know, I flew out there to see him. I mean, I, it was cool to see him, but he got so much cooler shit than me. Like, it, like they showed me everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was still one of those cool experiences. So, but that's, that's the hardest part is finding people, especially now because uh, I used to go to hospitals, but with COVID, I can't, oh, you know, yeah. for the past year, I, I can't go to them. Um, even with the mask on. So it's all social media. It's all word of mouth that I go by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, I, I remember seeing stories about that kid when that happened and there was like, yeah. like UFC fighters reaching out. I mean, everybody was reaching out. Dude, he got, he got the, the actual Captain America shield from Chris Evans. Chris wow. Evans said Robert Downey Jr. is sending him supposed to be sending him something this year. He's just met so many people and given them so many things. I'm like, well, I'm the only one to actually come see him. So yeah, yeah. When, <laughs> and like your your Batman attire is pretty legit looking. It's not yeah. like you're showing up with like a a mask with a fucking elastic band around the back of your head. You know, it, yeah, fucking like Walmart costume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it looks it looks legit. And then I saw how you added the mask to it for COVID yeah. shit. That was pretty cool. Because it, it, yeah. it looks like almost like an even darker version of Batman, but it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. And, and you know, I get a lot of, I, I'm, I'm on the fence with it because I get a lot of people like that's terrifying. And then some of them that's badass. Even the kids, they, the, the biggest thing that they don't like with the kids is the eyes because I have the eyes widened out where I can see mm. off the way that stupid makeup. And that's the one thing they don't like the most. I've noticed even with that mask on and I'm a big dude. I'm like six foot six one, but I'm like two fifty sideways, you know, so I'm a big guy. Um, and that's what they complain about the most is they can't see my eyes. That's a lot of hear what I hear. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. That, I mean, yeah, you could just, I guess, follow suit with all the Batman characters. They just do, you can see their eyes with the eyeliner. Like why is <laughs> has been wearing fucking eyeliner? Yeah, I can't. I couldn't film myself to do it, man. Like, yeah, call what it is then comfortable. Like, nope, I don't care. I don't. I don't want to do that shit. The, yeah. white, the white eyes, like being white out, reminds me of like the Batman cartoons. It's it's the comic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like the comic. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, well, and like you go back to like the Ben F, like Batman. He's a big dude. Ben F, like, yeah. like a big, broad shoulder. Like, well, he's six three, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's a pretty good sized guy. Yeah, because yeah. he did have. Dude. You go back to like Adam West, you know, he was all tall and gangly and skinny and yeah. and then I don't know, like uh George Clooney's kind of a big guy, but he was probably the worst Batman. Yeah. That was he was he wasn't a good Batman. He's just he's not that kind of actor. You know, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. That's, the, you know, the the Kilmer and and Clooney, that one kind of those two. I don't know. Yeah. You either hate them or love them. Yeah. And I, I love Val Kilmer too, but I think. he was a good Bruce Wayne he yeah was a good he, there, you go, there you go there you go I mean I'm even excited for the new the new one with Robert Pattinson I want to see see what it is you know what I mean give yeah. it a chance so and am I I'm very excited for it after the trailer I was like okay I'm, I think I'm in but yeah yeah, yeah. but so you you're you're an EMT too aren't you yeah I have been for about 12 12 years now yeah yeah, yeah so yep. have you ever made any contacts through your day job like to do the no. thing no um <clears throat> i'll try to but depending on the scene you know if it's hectic or not or what it is it'd be like hey just you know i know your husband's dying over there but i have this thing going yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> uh there are some yeah there there are some that like uh that are, that are more frequent um that i've reached out to um so i'll go see them sometimes but not not really for them yeah. uh but uh, yeah, I actually switched recently, like the past year, um, to working at a clinic so I can have more time to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. Because where I work, we had, I was on 24 hour shifts, 24 48s. And uh, after nine o'clock, we had like four trucks to cover the entire county. So mm -hmm. there have been times that we were up for like 
22 hours, 20 hours per shift. And then like the next day I'd be just dead. Can't do nothing. Sleep till like three, four o'clock. Then I have my one day off, but you know, I got kids as well. So I would, the one I would do it after work, I would just be a complete like zombie, just completely zoned out. And so I found a, a, a testosterone clinic. I know you guys dabbled in that a little bit. That's what I do now for a living. Um, and it came at the perfect time because I switched at, uh, in February to work for them and then COVID hit. So mm -hmm. like I got out of the ambience, like just in time yeah. for that. So it's one of those, like, I'm not really a big believer in, you know, things happen for a reason, but it kind of pointed that way, you yeah. know, sometimes things do happen. You know, it's things work themselves out some, for some fucking reason, they yeah. usually work themselves out at some point. Yeah, that's um so being an EMT, actually I looked into doing that a couple years ago. Mm. <clears throat> Cuz I always thought like I want to do some job where I feel like I'm helping people. Right. And I was looking into that night I have a friend who's an EMT and I reached out to her just kind of asking her about it and she's like, "First thing I'm going to tell you if you're in this for the money, don't do it." <laughs> right. She's like, "We yeah. we do not make very much money to do this." Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's, and that's fact that is 100% that fact uh, on a 24 hour truck. I was making uh, like $11 an hour and that's with experience. That's insane. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's not worth it. I mean, with, with your friends, she's, you know, she's, she's right. Cause you want, you don't want to really get paid like a fortune to do it, but you would at least take a, like a livable wage. You well, know what I mean? When like, you when you're doing a job like that, where you guys see yeah. things you have to see and deal with some of the shit you probably have to deal with, the, yeah, pay, exactly. the pay should match that. That's just yeah, exactly. like, like police or any first responders, I think should make a living wage, but more. I mean, there's it's mm -hmm. like almost like a, a hazard pay. You know what I'm saying? Cause right. I mean, I'm sure you've seen some shit that fucks with oh, you. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I've heard stories yeah. from people I know that are EMTs and cops and stuff and yeah. And that's kind of why I like doing this as well. Um, like I told you earlier is because when I put on the suit, I don't have to be me. You know what I mean? Like I could be that Batman character and forget about all of that and focus on this kid or focus on this family and get out of that situation for an hour, hour and a half at most where everything's, you know, calm, everything's all right. You know, um, as an EMT, you, you know, we're, limited on what we can do but the type of person i am I always went above and beyond like i want to be the best goddamn ent that i could be so i did like water rescue uh i went through florida swat training for uh tac med um so i did every possible certificate that i could like push the scope with so i've done it all so like water rescue scenes i've been there i've done that you know when we had like uh swat call outs i would go there see that and do that uh, you know, I wanted to do everything as much as possible into full force. That way, if I went to a different department, I had my certificate Bible and be like, this is all the shit I've done. This is what I do. And, you know, pretty much just beat the competition wherever I want to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Don't just be complacent and sit or sit, sitting around and yeah, like, oh, cool, I'm a basic EMT. Um, or there's 20 people in line. So I guess uh, exactly what, yeah. what makes you stand out? Yeah. Yeah that's awesome yeah that's that's pretty cool yeah like i said doing kind of a dive on you and your social media and stuff i saw some of your swat training and stuff that was yeah that's pretty, i also saw you you did like a first responder fight night or some shit <laughs> yeah yeah uh was that, that was that was for um they did like police versus fire um mm -hmm. uh, so i reached out i'm like hey uh i'm like ems i work with fire can i do it and they're like yeah sure fuck it come on in so I'm like, all right. And it was just like an exhibition one, but you know, just like any uh, exhibition fight, people are just going to go balls to the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So, fight. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. So I get there and I'm like, Oh, that's pretty dope. Like, they're like, yeah, if you win, you get this, this belt. I'm like, shit. Okay. I'm about that. <laughs> <laughs> one fight and get a belt. Hell yeah. So, uh, yeah, I won that one. That was pretty cool. Did you have any, any training, like fight training leading up to that? Yeah. I used to, uh, used to do mixed martial arts for years. Um, and it wasn't even like a, a BJJ place because the coach I went to was like a standard like high school wrestler and he did Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but he mixed both of them. So it wasn't no like technical classes. He just showed us how to do shit and then let us go and beat the hell out of each other for like three hours if we wanted to. 
so we would just roll around and, and do that. Um, and then before that, I used to box just, you know, as exercise because I've been a fat kid my whole life. Um, I feel that, so, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I would just do that. And then, you know, the guy asked me, he's like, you know, do you want to do this? I'm like, man, I haven't done it in a while, but fuck it. I like, the, I like the fight. So let's go. That's cool. I ended up winning. So yeah. Hell yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, um, the SWAT class, man, there's some bad motherfuckers there, dude. They, yeah. Uh, Kevin spent some time with guys here with the SWAT and he's told me some stories about that. Yeah. We had, um, we had a group from Belgium come over and they, they, uh, they do like diplomatic security and they were just teaching us shit. They're like, you might get in trouble if you do this, but we're going to show you anyway. So I'm <laughs> like, right, okay, this yeah. is going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you went, you went out like to the range and shit, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, like the SWAT snipers and stuff. Yeah. 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 That was super, super fun. I didn't do it a whole lot, especially because of school, but yeah, missed out. <laughs> No, I, I, you, I you were in, you went to sniper school, right? Uh huh. Yeah, in the army. Yep. Yeah. 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 He was That's a sniper. Awesome. sniper for how long? Um, three and a half years. Yeah. Out of the five I was in. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Honestly, I got, I didn't really perfect anything until like I got out. I mean, you have time to just actually sit down and do it versus everything was being rushed and everything always, you know, it's just kind of forced. It's like, okay, just make sure you can do the bare minimum make sure you can effectively, you know, shoot someone at 600 meters under pressure. You have to, you know, but when you can actually just relax and do your thing, like in the civilian side, it's, you almost get better really. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Depending on, I guess what unit you're in, but mm -hmm. anyway, <laughs> I would think, yeah, that, yeah, I always, that's like, just dope. yeah, no, yeah, thanks. Um, I always like the idea of, it's so kind of related. I like the idea of Batman because of like the way I grew up and having to be around people like being taken like a trailer park and getting picked on and shit. Mm -hmm. I had this deeply rooted um, hatred for people like that. And so it was like vigilante, I'm like the Punisher, Batman, people like that. Like, yeah, I get that. I have no empathy for people like that. I don't mind fucking killing them. Cool. We're doing everybody <laughs> yeah. a favor. They're breathing. Our no, hey, you know, you're, you're right. Especially now. I, it, you know, it's hard, like, right now, because a lot of people are, I feel, like, really sensitive. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, bullying back when we were kids, they would, like, have already killed themselves, I feel like, right now. If, mm -hmm. You know, instead of just the internet. Um, but at some point, you know, there's there's that line that just couldn't be drawn. And, you know, especially with, like, kids and everything. Because I've done two visits with kids that have been bullied. I'm just like, man, that's, that's harsh, dude. Like, yeah. Well, and <clears throat> I think that's why, like, you hear it a lot, especially nowadays, but put your kids in fucking martial arts. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. That's one of the best things you can do. So they know how to defend themselves if it comes down to that. I know actually, yeah. <clears throat> my jujitsu coach went on another podcast. It was an MMA podcast and I listened to it and the guy asked him like, what are your closing thoughts? You know? And that was, a, that's what he said. He said, get your kids into martial arts because if they learn how, I mean, if you've, you've done, you've done it. So you, you know, like you're, if something were to happen to you in the real world, you're so much more comfortable because you've right. done it uh, over and over and over. That same thing you were just talking about with your, with shooting <clears throat> under pressure learning. And if a kid learns how to protect themselves, someone might still fuck with them, but they're not going to do it again. Yeah. Right. They're going to be confident. You know, people, people react out of fears to such an extent level that they do the wrong thing because they don't know how to control themselves in a situation. Mm -hmm. You know, just like someone who's not very proficient with a firearm, who maybe knows the bare minimum. And then pulls that gun on someone just because they feel threatened. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, maybe if you knew how to control yourself in these types of situations better, you're confident with your yourself, you wouldn't have to escalate that quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Um, because you see it all the time with police officers, right? They don't know how to fucking sprint after a dude up a hill because they're <laughs> I saw that video the other day. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, like three hundred it was like three cops chasing this guy, and they just could not get him because they're all like, you know, way out of shape. You know, or if they've never wrestled with anybody or done jujitsu or have never been in striking classes, it's like, okay, so they're probably gonna go straight for their gun because they can't fight a motherfucker. Right. Um, like if you're in the job, you have to realize you have to have that dichotomy of being a passionate, loving, caring person and being a fucking killer, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, a killer mentality. Like you've got yeah. to turn it on, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and the worst part is is you have people that'll just judge a cop, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. That's yeah. It's it's one of those, you know, and, and I always thought on the on the box, like I'm going home. 
I, I, I don't care. Like I'm going home. That's, yeah. that's my job. Like I'm going to do my best to save you and whoever needs it. But at the end of the day, I'm going home. That that's it. You know? Yeah. So I, I agree, you know, with, you know, I, I back the blue 100%. I have best friends that are in it. I have best friends that are in military. And then I still have people that do, you know, fire and, and, and EMS. Mm-hmm. And I support those guys because unless you do it, you have no fucking clue what it's like. Yeah. Well, and they're, they're thankless jobs especially in the the climate over the past year you know with all the craziness in the in the country yep. and then it's it's that thing like no matter what whether it's cops or whether it's a normal citizen you always see the bad shit online and then everybody mm-hmm. puts them in you know they put them all together and so like we have some friends that are cops too and they're good fucking people and yep. they, they would never do the things that you see these cops doing online or or on the news you know it's like they'd be the one to step in and stop that shit right if, if someone was out of line <clears throat> so i think you know that's that's what the internet though you, it's you get that that loud minority of people on there and everybody sees it and hears it and it's it's unfortunate but it really I, think, is, man. I think in in the real world most people know like there's good cops out there there's good good and bad in everybody yeah right. and yeah it's i mean i'm Absolutely. sure i'm sure there's emts out there that are fucking assholes i'm sure oh yeah but there, like one of, one of the good guys that i know like he taught me a lot uh like medically but like oh no he's a piece of shit like he yeah. sucks yeah. <laughs> you know so they're they're everywhere and it's and it's and everything the the thing that irritates me the most is when fired ems become targets for no reason mm. like 90 percent of us can't carry firearms we're not allowed because of the job so mm. I mean, I've heard of people setting their house on fire. And then when the fire engine pulls up, just start opening on them. Mm. You know, like what, the f- like why? What the fuck's the purpose of that? Because yeah. if you're not us, then you're the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody, everybody's essentially privileged, right? Uh, my buddy who's a cop the other day just said how somebody called him a white privileged man. Like, and he was like, okay, I've done two tours in Iraq and mm-hmm. on the SWAT team and a, a cop. So why am I, why am I white and privileged? A school, like if I, a school resource officer yeah it's like if i've learned everything if i've built everything on my own why am i privileged and white and am i a millionaire based off of doing being a public servant no you know it's like people just if you're not us you're the enemy right you know because they're disenfranchised probably shitty neighborhoods like that fucking sucks i didn't personally do that to you you know probably you know that's the establishment might have done it to you maybe your parents drug addiction did it to you like that's cool. But I know a lot of people who have actually I do have met a ton of people being in the military whose parents were in and out of prison, drug addicts who are very successful, wealthy people, or at least successful. And they are happy with their lives. They're content. They do what they want to do. They do things that make them happy and avoid things that bring them pain, like suffering. It's like, okay, these are healthy people. And they came from that. So we all have opportunity and we have as much opportunity as our grandparents did. Okay, if not more, some people already yeah. know. Some people have actually argued that our grandparents had more opportunity because they could come off a boat and get a job. So okay, well, there's how many millions of illegal immigrants that can go get a job right now that are working? That's pretty mm-hmm. much opportunity if you you know are defining it. So we all have fucking opportunity, but if people are going to target because I've seen that too. I can't remember what documentary it was, but EMT and fire being targeted when they show up to like, I've seen shit like that, get people out of there. They're injured and then they're being targeted and trying to be, and they're getting their asses beat. It's like, cool. I can't carry a firearm. Mm -hmm. And so they're quitting. I can't remember what city was that. Maybe it was, it was probably Florida. A lot of crazy shit. It was like Florida, (laughs) Detroit or something, but EMTs are essentially just walking out the job because they were being targeted. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. But, but I think that goes back to the, the easy target thing. Like, like I was saying, get your kids into martial arts. Mm-hmm. They're less of an easy target. If you're less of an easy target, people aren't going to fuck with you. And people know that EMT and fire can't carry a gun. So yeah, we don't care. That no. right there makes you an easier target than a police officer that has a gun, which is, I think, like, if you're going to emergency situations, why wouldn't, if you wanted to, why wouldn't you be able to carry a, a weapon? That's Oh, like, yeah, and especially, you know, and it's just like with, with law, you have no fucking clue what you're stepping into. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I've had knives pulled on me. That guy is called and complained for back pain. You know, so like every situation is, is just different and it's a different world that we're in now compared to, you know, even 10, 20 years ago. It's completely fucking different. Yeah. Um, and it's it's sad seeing that EMS have to wear, you know, body armor to go save lives because they're if they go through the wrong neighborhood, they're going to get shot at. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's, <clears throat> it goes back to like, you know, the right proper training and shit. If EMT fire had the proper training with firearms, why not? Why wouldn't they be able yeah. to, and the proper training with de-escalation, all the same shit cops should be getting training in that they're not always getting. Yeah. I think anybody who's in that, like, cause you guys are showing up to the same scenes a lot of times. Yeah. I mean, you, and you might get somebody in the back of that ambulance. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. That, that's where something like martial arts come yeah. into play. If you know how to, and then when you're tar- yeah, and then when you're targeted, then it makes you angry at those people because you're trying to understand why they're that way. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I've had those feelings like in the last neighborhood I lived in, I legitimately like, I was didn't follow through with it, but I had legitimate, like I was staying up at night and think about how fun it would be like, Oh my God, two, three o'clock in the morning, just sneak around into the back doors and start slitting throats. <laughs> And like, <laughs> Dexter and the dude, Punisher comes back and start play. just like dropping grenades in people's houses, just fucking do whatever I could do. Like, I was like, well, if there's children in there, someone asked me, I was telling them one time, I was like, well, obviously you leave them alone, or you know, you're gonna make their life worse. So might as well take them out. Too. Oh my no, god, I'm just joking. <laughs> no. Like, obviously you don't attack a house that has children in it because then you're fucking them up mentally. So you gotta you gotta yeah. plan first. You know, dogs I don't <laughs> give a fuck about. You know, but yeah, never never with children. But yeah, that was a super cool idea. Obviously, didn't fall through with it. So when we start hearing, stories the, <laughs> yeah, we, we start hearing stories in the news about a local vigilante here. I'm gonna, oh, know, I'm gonna know who the fuck it is. Yeah. Like, God damn it, Kevin! No, we need someone. It has to be just some single guy with no kids, no family, doesn't care what happens. <laughs> He's just out there, to just like do do the right thing, you know. <clears throat> Luckily, around here, our crime rate's still pretty fucking low compared to other places. Even even with our growth here, it's it's it the crime is growing with the growth we've had here, but it's still it's a very safe place to live right um, yeah unlike some bigger cities and we're, we're getting bigger and bigger every day but we also have a ton of cops here yeah i mean that's we have a big police presence here which is a good thing i think yeah um, unfortunately we're starting to get i mean we've always had tourists because like i said we're right by the springs you know it's crystal clear manatees yeah all that shit but now the expressway we have is coming right through our county so now they're building it up you know, they're having like uh, more gas stations and more little shithole fast food places. Oh, and, yeah. You know, unfortunately, it's taking a lot of it out of there. But you know, we're we're on we're, I, where I'm at. We're it's it's a good old boy country. You know, so it's not terrible. The 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 worst thing we have here is just you know overdoses and drugs and shit like that. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah people are a disease, man. But that's true. Like that, like the gas stations and fast food joints, they ruin just the look and the feel of any environment. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's all for their profit. Like I, I love America and capitalism somewhat works, but that's a result of it. Shit gets gross and ugly real quick, mm-hmm. you know, or you have a nice area outside of town, like Donley and they put those brown shitty fucking houses, those duplexes all over in Donley. Yeah. You just ruin nice countryside just for a million bucks. Yeah. Cool. Like, yep. People, yeah, suck. people suck dude the town he's talking about it's a small mountain town up north from here and it's a beautiful beautiful little town up in the mountains surrounded by pine trees and all that and they do have like condos that they built up there and it's like that's i think yeah. these under the cheap ass brown well, yeah they're not even condos but they're ugly and just they're, filled with just filled with undesirables like multi-level living which is yeah i mean it's just in that area it just kind of ruins that little stretch through that little town but oh yeah absolutely yeah. yeah that's why i love going up to see my dad my dad lives in uh like five minutes from Asheville, north carolina he's right by the mountains you know Ooh, nice yeah so i love get. i love getting out of here going up there and i, I love that you know i'm not that city type I, I have to work in the city unfortunately but i'd rather just be up in the fucking mountains and leave me be yeah yeah seriously it's 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 hard sometimes to because we're all kind of different like we're all similar in ways but we're all so different ways too it's like i totally agree it's hard to for me to understand to put myself in the mind of someone who only loves being in the city and just like i don't really like camping or mountains or getting out it's like man that's that's hard to come see their point of view because it is just yeah yeah it, it completely changed my father like he was born and raised in florida as well and always clean shaven all that as soon as he got up there he turned a complete 180 has grew a fucking beard he goes hiking farmer's market I'm like who the fuck are you what are you doing <laughs> yeah and, you know and i feel so bad for him because he's a republican and apparently up there it's completely blue so he's completely outnumbered i'm like oh, yeah he's like i just hated fucking florida he's like i had to get out yeah as soon as, as, soon as he was able to him him and my stepmom gone see you later i've, I've never, blame him. I've never yeah. been to florida have you ever been to florida um yeah, yeah. once um 
I went through the through an airport and I went to the outlet for a little bit because we had a LA over there. And I just remember seeing a bunch of Cubans everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never been down. I'd like to go just check out Florida. I probably wouldn't want to live there because it's too fucking hot, but I wouldn't mind checking yeah. it out. I'd like to go like visit like St. Petersburg because all the cool people I've seen. Let's just go there. to Miami and get wild. Dude, just go get wild and just. <laughs> wild in Miami. Yeah. Some hookers. <laughs> hookers and cocaine. Hey, you ain't got to go that far, man. You, like you said, you want to go to St. Pete, you'll find that in St. Pete. <laughs> <laughs> so you ain't got to go all the way there. Yeah. So, uh, I guess let's, let's talk about your nonprofit that you ended up starting. It's Mass yeah, Miracles, man. right? Yeah. Uh, I just got approved uh, last September because of COVID. I don't know how that delays everything, but they said it's going to delay it. So in like March, I applied for it. Uh, and then I got approved in like September. So uh, I'm trying. <laughs> that's that's what I almost say because my entire life from when I was 17 until you know currently i've been i've been in the fire service i've started volunteering and then i got my emt and just you know stuck with medical so that's all i've done i've never had any never thought i would try to run a nonprofit or anything and everybody i've spoken to they're like well you got to kind of run it like a business so i'm like well fuck i don't know what i'm doing mm-hmm. so i'm learning as i go but the reason why i wanted to start it is because like i was saying my oldest daughter she was premature she was 27 weeks um and she was in the hospital for three months Oh, wow. uh, yeah. But, you know, bills still had to be paid. We still had, you know, rent due and we still had to pay the electric and our car bill. They don't care if your kid's in the fucking hospital. They don't give a shit. They just want their money. Mm-hmm. So I would, I had to pick up a second job. I worked uh, like a BLS ambulance, which was like, you know, just going from like nursing home to hospital, hospital, nursing home, going to hospice, that kind of shit. And then working the, the 911 ALS response, working both of those jobs just to, you know, keep our lights on, you know? So I missed time with my daughter. I mean, even though she was just born, it's not like I, I could have done anything, but I missed time with them. It pretty much ruined the relationship I had with their mom, you know, because I was always gone. She was there. We were fighting, never saw each other. Um, so I started the nonprofit because I don't, I've been to that and I don't want another family to have to do that. Like if I can give you money to, to pay your rent for a month, that's, the few extra shifts you don't have to pick up that you can focus on with your family, you know, Um, because, because I've been there. Um, We've done one fundraiser so far and um, actually black rifle helped me out. They donated some stuff to raffle off. um, And we were able to pay uh, for medical supplies for the rest of the year for a little kid and help them get insurance, like new insurance. So that's what I'm trying. That's what I want to do. You know, I, I, I hate for somebody to, lose time with their kid especially if their kids like three four five because the kid's gonna realize like you know it's only mom here it's only dad here i'd rather have both parents there to give because you know they say that you know the positivity the kids feed off of it when they're sick and they can tell when people are upset and you know the kids feed off of you and how you act so they can see if mom or dad are stressed they know mom and dad are fighting so it's not going to help them mm-hmm. and that's what i that's what i want to do with the nonprofit, you know but I like helping people. So I, I, I'll try to help anybody I can, you know, um, but it's just trying to figure out how to get to that level because that's the end goal. So I just want to run the nonprofit. I can't be Batman forever, unfortunately. So I, I want to be able to do this continuously without, you know, having to keep working, you know, as an EMT and, and just mm-hmm. focus on that. That's what I'd like to do. Yeah. So do you like go based off donations and stuff? Is that what how you guys are you trying to operate it? Yeah. So we'll go off donations. Um, and then, you know, I'll start doing the fundraiser, but again, like I'm learning as I go. So the first one, uh, you know, we raised about two, three grand. That was great. So we helped out that family with, you know, their medical expenses. Um, and then I, uh, bought some, uh, new characters. That's why I called it mass miracles because, uh, unfortunately Batman is not everybody's favorite. Mm-hmm. So I had to get, you know, new characters to go because I want to be able to, to, go see everybody i don't want one of those like oh well he doesn't really like batman so like oh well you know sorry fuck a kid you know Mm -hmm. right so i I had to get new people um and then just figuring out what to do next you know obviously the end goal is to get a batmobile they're extremely expensive so i kind of i had a a trailer donated to me uh, a big enclosed one and that's where i actually i'm making a mobile bat cave that's where this suit is going to go okay Uh, so I'll have that. I had gadgets made up. Um, I have a TV in there. 
so when the kids come, they'll be able to like take the gadgets off the wall. I'm gonna let one of them like, you know, take some with them, just kind of get that full, like, holy shit experience. And that's mm-hmm. what I, I really want to do. Um, but yeah, just mostly donations and fundraisers is what we're doing right now. Yeah. So you, you just, <clears throat> you just got to get the word out there about what you're doing more. I mean, yeah, you're, and that's you're what's just, so hard is uh, yeah, you know, like I told you, I'm like, I'm like, you can look at my Facebook, man. I got a, a better following there. It's yeah, like, yeah. I'm trying to every, every post I share will go on the mass miracles part, but like my, you know, my Facebook is huge, but the, the mass miracles one isn't. So, so it's, it, that's what sucks about it is because I have a very large following on the Batman and not so much on the nonprofit. So I'm trying to merge them together. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say you have a pretty substantial following on, on your Facebook. And yeah. That's, I mean, nowadays that's how you promote anything is social media, but yeah, I, it is. And that's, and that's, and that's when, when I, when I was, uh, was talking to you when I first messaged you guys, I'm like, Hey man, I'm, I'm EMT and this is what I do. Because a lot of times when people get a message from the Batman of Spring Hill, they just think you're some weird cosplayer, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You wanna look? <laughs> <laughs> I'm into so, some weird shit, but yeah. No, just, um, yeah. I mean, what, if I, I mean, you've been on a couple of podcasts, but I'd, I'd try to get on as many podcasts as you can. Like, cause yeah. there's, there's so many damn podcasts and this one is fairly new. I mean, we've been going since September, but Mm-hmm. we have a pretty decent little following that listens and i mean there's bigger podcasts out there than us that i'm sure would be glad to have you on that, that's what i would be shooting for yeah and, it, and it's just getting in, in contact with them you know because i i message everybody about what i do and everything so i barely get responses so when you responded i'm like well fuck yeah yeah uh, it was kind of like uh my buddy the first time you know, cause like I said, I've never expected to get this large with it. Uh, and my friend, Dustin Sims, he's a, a comedian on Facebook. Um, and he blew up and now that's all he does. So like he was showing me how to grow my Facebook and everything. Cause he used to work at Honda was doing comedy on Facebook and now he's touring for full time. Like that's what he does. Oh yeah. Um, you know, so when I commented on one of his videos he commented back, he's like, Hey man, love what you're doing. I'm like, Yo, she's like, you know who the fuck I am? Like, that's awesome. Like, that's great. Yeah. So uh from him, I met Joey Leonard. He's an army vet too. He's a he does comedy. Um, he's got his own clothing line called Mullet Gang. He's a cool dude. I've been on both of their podcasts. Um, and then it's just it's just trying to network and connect with people. That's that's what I'm trying to do the best as I can. We just had a, a malfunction over here that Kevin's mic stand fell over. <laughs> <laughs> it was made in china oh man like i said this is our first time doing it this little setup but no uh yeah i, I get where you're coming from when it's like you talk about reaching out to people online because when we first started this i was reaching out to everybody and anybody i could to get them to come on and be a guest and we heard back yeah. from we heard back from a few but there's a lot of people we never did hear back and we still haven't heard from we are getting yeah. to the point, point now where people are reaching out to us which is fucking amazing because it makes my job a little bit easier but once you get like, like that was a big thing for us. We got one person who had a substantial following, then it started to roll. So like, like you said, if you continue to just keep pushing what you're doing, people are going to notice. What, yeah, eventually. What and that's like I said, whether it's social media or podcasts, mm-hmm. I think the more podcasts and now that like you're going on more podcasts, other people are going to hear you and they're like, fuck, I want him on my podcast. Yeah. And I love doing, them. I love, I love doing podcasts and I love talking with people. You know, especially just the ones where we can just talk about anything. Yeah. Those are yeah. the best ones. They're just natural conversation. Those are the best ones to go. Cause like I don't I don't like talking about myself and what I do. I feel awkward after about like five, 10 minutes. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I'd rather just come on, talk to people, you know, and see where it goes from there. Just like I love listening to your guys' show because that's how all your shows have started, just going right into conversation. Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, each conversation goes into the next subject, next subject, next subject, next subject. And that's you know, awesome. That's what yeah. I love hearing. Yeah, it's it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Seinfeld. It's like it's it's about nothing, but then it turns into something, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Um, we always start with like nothing on the end. Like if you listen from the beginning, obviously there's a progression there, and we've kind of gotten into a groove. Yeah, because we didn't want it to be like really like a straight up interview, but sometimes that's that's nice to be like we've asked you a few straight up questions. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like I think podcast podcasts is they're a really good way to get what you're doing out there in the world now because everybody listens to fucking podcasts nowadays mm-hmm. yeah it's podcast instagram and facebook you know <clears throat> yeah. it's just like 
you know, they just want to hear it or see it, you know, because um, a lot of people are tired of the news. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. like seventy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the news isn't reliable. I mean, like we talked, we were talking about like last night or yesterday, like Fox, MSNBC, and CNN are not news sources, and people that watch those are ridiculous because they're legitimately not news sources. They're just personalities um, putting the narrative just, out there. You just have to understand that it's not. And I think exactly what Tom answer actually. You just need to ask any academic in the you know in that world and they'll tell you do not listen to those because these are people that fact check for a living they're you know um philosophy or sociology anthropology apology you know phds and they'll say like don't that's those are not news sources and i think new york times is that the one i was saying yeah yeah new york times times. has like eight people on a panel from conservative to liberal that are vetting everything across each other before it's released so even though a lot of people consider New York Times maybe more liberal sometimes, but it's like they can be biased, but they're biased, but their can. shit's vetted at least. Yeah. You know, right. MSNBC and CNN don't have that. Fox has three retards who go through their shit and biasly vets it, you know. Um, so yeah, stop watching the fucking news. Actually, I would say it's all kind of bullshit anyway, but I guess it's 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 go, America. Go go back to the fucking newspapers. Go back to the fucking newspapers. <laughs> Just listen to the but, government. Well, I mean, most of my information I get from all the different podcasts I listen to. Right. Because you're listening to intelligent people yeah. talk about it. Like, if you want to know anything about, you know, like, oh, what's the leaps and bounds in physics right now? It's like, oh, go listen to Brian Greene or mm-hmm. um, Neil deGrasse Tyson on Joe Rogan because mm-hmm. they have no reason to bullshit you, yeah. you know. Um, They're just talking about what they're experts in. Exactly. And that's yeah. kind of a lot. So I like a lot of podcasts for that. You know, no one's, no one's there really to bullshit you on a podcast. There, there is some, but well, yeah, if they're, they're, well, if they're comedians. Yeah. 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 Clearly. But yeah. And then like even a podcast like ours with which it's like, we're still small scale compared to other podcasts that are out there, but you coming on here, there's going to be people that listen to this that are like, Oh fuck, that sounds cool. What that guy's doing. And they're going to go look you up and, and follow what you're doing. And I, I urge yeah. you guys listening to do that. And if you know somebody that can fucking help, then send them, send them his way. I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's what it takes is just word, word of mouth is like the biggest thing, I think, to get noticed in what you're doing. Yeah. And plus, if you're doing a positive, like you are you're doing a positive, genuine thing, then people are more likely to accept it and run with it versus, mm, I don't know. What's he really about? Like, it's pretty obvious. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So I think it, yeah, I imagine it's taken off pretty quick with the foundation. It's just got to be, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be like a little, it just has to uh, organically spread like a nice, like a good virus, right? Mm. It's just it's right. Right, exponentially grow. You're going to get two, then five, then eight, then 20, then like a few hundred, you know, you're going to exponentially grow, I imagine, with that. Um, yeah, I think it'll be good. And it, yeah, uh, that's what I'm hoping anyway. Yeah, well, we know from experience when you're doing something that's like a whole nother job that you're not getting anything from, <laughs> there's no income from that. And it's like a whole nother job on top of your existing job that can be exhausting. Right. And once you start to see that go in the direction you want it to go, man, it's it's like weight off your shoulders. I'm sure you've had that where it's like something, oh, yeah. something good happens and you're like, fuck yes. And I think if you keep putting yourself out there, going on podcasts, getting on some podcasts, using social media to your advantage because what you're doing why would anybody not like what you're doing you know what i'm saying Agreed. Why wouldn't people want to want to help whether it's a donation yeah. or whether it's hooking you up with somebody who can substantially help you you know what i mean yeah exactly or just sharing my stuff that's the, that's the biggest thing like i have people they'll reach out to like you know i love what you're doing i wish you know i could donate i'm like look i don't need your money like just share my stuff, like reach it out because there may be that one family that sees it like, Oh, I could, I could really you know, use that. Or, you know, my son and daughter would love to see him. So yeah. sharing my stuff is, is the best way because who knows who's going to see it, you yeah. know? And that's, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping somebody, somebody sees it that, you know, will be able to like help and guide me and tell me which way to go and how to do things, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm trying, like I reach out to everybody that I, that I can think of, um, and like I said, I think the biggest thing is like the platforms, because right now I know Instagram is a lot bigger than like Facebook, depending mm-hmm. on who you ask and everything, like more people are on there. So I'm trying, like I said, everything I do goes on all the platforms. It, yeah. it, so hopefully one thing will take off. I get more 
um, shares and everything from Facebook. So that's why my main focus is with is with that. And then I'll share everything else. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully somebody will see it in the grow. I think I think more people have uh, transferred over to Instagram because I think Facebook was the one. But yeah. me personally, I prefer Instagram. I like mm-hmm. the fact that it's more visual. And right. And there, there, there's less bullshit on there because it's more visual than it is words. So yeah, yeah I think it's still bullshit. I mean, it's still it's still social media. <laughs> it's much of Photoshop. <laughs> fucking a, girls turned halfway around. And just, <laughs> that's that's a fact. But thirst traps, dude. But I'm talking about like if you're using social media, which we are, it's yeah. the way to go. I think. Yeah. And then you just stay the fuck off Twitter, which we have <laughs> we have it we have a Twitter, but I I don't I don't get it. I don't want to get it. <laughs> We we use Facebook too, but see ours is the opposite. Our following's bigger on our Instagram, right? Than it is our Facebook, and I I can't seem to gain any ground with our podcast on Facebook, which Same. it's it's kind of kind of odd. I think I understand the algorithm on Instagram a little better than I do Facebook, maybe. But yeah, it's it's interesting. So where where can people like reach out to? Where can they find you? What are, what are all your handles? What's how can they donate stuff like that? So the bigger two, obviously, is the Batman of Spring Hill. That one on Facebook, you can find. Uh, the nonprofit is uh, Mass Miracles, Inc. on Facebook as well. Uh, if you go to massmiracles.org, that's the website. You can donate straight from there. Um, and those are those are my two main handles. That's where I'm at. Awesome. I'll put, I'll put all those in the description for the podcast, and we'll, we'll blast out your shit for the next week, too. I mean, we'll share everything. I appreciate um, it. And hopefully get some, some more people, some more eyeballs your way. Because yeah. what you're doing is a good fucking thing, and if you, like I said, if you get some some of the right people behind you, I think you can, yeah, you can grow this thing and help a lot of kids out. That's the goal, man. That's the goal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's I, I, I like what you're doing. So, well, I guess we can wrap it up. Yeah. Um, cool, my shit fell apart. Yeah. So yeah, the mic. <laughs> We're, we're, like I said, we're, this thing is like our first setup. We're going to probably have a different table. We were just trying to go with the table instead of how we've had it. Cause in our studio we built, it's, uh, not, uh, climate controlled and it's getting fucking hot in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good fucking move. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So now we're, we're actually in a house right now that has air, which is nice. AC. Uh, nice. Yeah. We just killed some people and took their house over. Yeah. We just took over the house. It's no it big is. deal. That's Whatever our, you got to do, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah so uh everybody listening definitely reach out to jack and the batman of spring hill and follow his social media and tell everybody about him so yeah all right man well thank you so much guys dude thanks for coming on this yeah seriously I mean, we did we just did an hour and then went by really fast yeah i know that was really fast <laughs> yes it was um so yeah and if you need anything from us don't hesitate to reach out and sure. like said, we'll share all your shit and and hopefully get some eyeballs your way. Awesome. All right, dude. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Yep. Yeah, see you, man.